Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, we're doing the Seven Years' War. If you're not ready to learn, get the hell out of here, all right? Nobody wants you. Just, there's the door. Unless you just want to chill, that's fine. If you're new to the channel, my name's Connor. Hello. Ah. Join the Discord. Subscribe. Do all that stuff. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. Discord makes it easier for me to interact with you guys and create the watering hole atmosphere around YouTube videos that I want to create. History. Let's get into it. That was a terrible intro. All right. Feature history, Seven Years War. Original link to the video at the top description below. The Discord link will be right below that. The Go. Seven Years War, a legendary conflict that involved every great power of Europe, spanned five continents and affected the world for centuries to come. Its legacy now lives on in dull history courses that bore me to tears. I had to read those for this. I hope you appreciate that. I do. I get copyrighted. Get ready to learn. If you're not ready, there's the door. Hello and welcome to Feature History, featuring the Seven Years' War, the World War before World Wars were cool. This war of history forever lives right, on as a- Right, considered the kind of the first World War real- Seven Sorry. Years' War, the World War before World Wars were cool. This war of history forever lives on as a listed reason for the American and French Revolution. Oh, I just got spanked in the butt by the War of the Roses. I feel like I was, I was, I was catching on until like, the third minute, I'm going to make sure I understand this. This war of history forever lives I will on rewind as a listed reason to. for the American and French Revolution. But honestly, I think it's way cool. History forever lives on okay. as a listed reason for the American and French Revolution. But honestly, I think it's way cooler than those two conflicts. I think I'm safe in assuming we've all heard of it, maybe even some aspects about it. But what were the causes, the occurrences, and the effects? The nitty gritty, so to say. Well, turns Murphy? out I made a video on that. And you're watching it. And she keep doing just that. So I'm going to attempt to delve into the Herculean task, as some would have you think, of explaining the causes. I've never heard that. I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm going to attempt to delve into the Herculean task, as some would have you think, of explaining the causes of the Seven Years' Let's War. Let's do it. I'll disclaim as well, I fully understand why people- Pay attention. Oh, Marshal Massena is with us still, right? Is he? There you are. Oh, let me kind of raise you up a bit. And uh, you're good where you were, actually. It's such a difficult time. Causes of How's the your eye doing? War. I'll disclaim as well, I fully understand why people describe it as such a difficult task, as it's hard not to sound like a spastic as you try to cover so many things at once. We'll start with the European side of the long, torturous story. The most clear cause for the war would bring us back to 1740 this. with the Holy Roman Emperor Charles VI's passing. His daughter, Maria Theresa, would be the one to succeed him, inheriting his many titles and becoming the Queen of Hungary, Croatia, Bohemia, and most importantly for the sake of this video, the Archduchess of Austria, and also for the purpose of noting she'd become Holy Roman Empress later in 1745. Frederick II of Prussia, or as history would record him, Frederick the Great, questioned her inheritance, and like a fussy lawyer, cited Salic law as a reason she could not inherit these titles, but rather he just wished I to don't challenge know what Salic law is. power. He would declare war against Austria and be joined by France, Spain, Sweden, and other countries I don't care about. The War of Austrian Succession would rage on for over half a decade, and Frederick took the chance to prove his strategical superiority at every opportunity. In doing so, he was able to seize control Control of the cool, this is so so this is uh seventeen hundreds. I've been wanting to learn about region superiority at every opportunity. In doing so, he was able this to seize control of the Austrian region of Silesia, dealing a serious blow to Theresa. The war would end with the controversial treaty of El La Chapelle in 1748. Its dominant focus was that of Prussia annexing Silesia, leaving France out of the picture and seriously offending Louis XV in the process. Alongside Louis's degrading opinion of Frederick, so had Theresa's opinion to her ally of the war, George II. The treaty of El La Chapelle in 1748. Its dominant focus was that of Prussia. I'm going to stop saying this eventually but if you're new to the channel i'm a terrible learner i have add my attention span is that of a rock i learned history through youtube i, I enjoyed watching youtube history videos and channels before making the channel and i don't want to give up learning just so i make sure i don't backtrack to make it a good experience for you guys all right so i will backtrack if i miss something 
giving you a heads up now. The Annex Treaty of Aix la chapelle in 1748. Its dominant focus was that of Prussia annexing Silesia, leaving France out of the picture and seriously offending Louis XV in the process. Alongside Louis's degrading opinion of Frederick, so had Theresa's opinion to her ally of the war, George II. George had managed to escape a decisive defeat at the cost of Austria, and he was attempting to pressure Theresa into just cutting her losses and letting go of Silesia. Alliances would switch. The longtime rivals of Britain and France decided to swap their allies, Britain now backing Prussia and France, Austria. Britain and France, with the conflicts in Europe aside, had been brewing their own future conflicts ashore. In North America, tensions grew. By 1754, Spain's colonial claims to the America had lost a significant proportion of their significance, and the British and French were invested in the eastern seaboard of North America. The British possessed most of the modern days. British and I am right. Can you see my cursor? I don't know if you can. Right there. French were invested in the East. America had lost a significant proportion of their significance, and the British and French were invested in the eastern seaboard of North America. The British possessed most of the modern day's U.S.'s eastern sea line, whilst France laid claim to a large area of the Midwest, Louisiana, and eastern Canada. These claims, more so the French ones, were not by any stretch of the imagination densely populated. Many regions only possessed a sign that marked it as either French or British lands. The native tribes of the area were also heavily invested in the conflict, Is this as they traded come, with these colonial powers often, and many operated their wars and states of the resources of foreign powers. For many decades, they had been able to play the French and British off of one another to retain a form of independence and control. A line was to be drawn in the sand, and the major native powers of the region would have to choose a side. The Iroquois and the Cherokees would side with the British, whilst pretty much everyone else, being the Hurons, Algonquins, Abenakis, and Micmacs, would join the French. The French would need it as well, given their significant disadvantage in numbers due to their sparsely populated colonies. The war in the Americas I wonder if they had those flags, the uh, tribes, before the Europeans showed up. I, 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 were, were flags a whole kind of... Um, I like the little Big Dipper one or whatever. Significant disadvantage in numbers due to their sparsely populated colonies. The war in the Americas would start earlier than the conflict in Europe, being dubbed the French and Indian War. The combat began in 1754. The scuffle would usually go something like the British saying, You might have a claim, but I've got a fort. And the French would retort, Well, you might have your fort, but they've got three forts. And the British would reply, We well, might have some forts, but I've got a gun. And then fighting began. You're welcome for those impressions. Louis XV That's would good. call this an act of war, and George would shrug his shoulders. 1754 to 1755 would generally be considered as failures for the British, because whilst not losing much ground, they weren't able to gain too much either. With the exception of their victory in Acadia, the situation so far was somewhat bleak. North like America, Acadia of course, wasn't the only Park. colonies that would see combat. India would see its own fair share of warring. In the subcontinent, the one's dominant mucus empire's power had See, wh why isn't this the first world war see its own fair share of warring in the subcontinent the once dominant mughal empire's power had been waning for some time britain's state-owned company hold the on east I'm, India I'm paranoid company, that it's not recording it is okay waging a had been waning for some time. Britain's state-owned company, the East India Company, had been waging an economic war against Dutch, French, and independent companies in an attempt to seize a monopoly over the valuable spices in the area. Like the Mughal Empire's decline and the India. infighting it had been experiencing with entities such as the Maratha Confederacy, the area was left wide open to a European annexation. Whilst the East India Company had certainly been a top dog in the area for some time, it wished to officially cement its position against the French and the Dutch, ideally in a war with boats. I've heard Britain likes boats. Back in yeah, Europe, and I want to learn more to take about back it. Silesia grew more and more. Her wishes would be accompanied by Louis's wishes to see France rival British colonial power and Elizabeth of Russia's wish to conquer Eastern Prussia. Frederick fully understood. Okay. 
colonial power and Elizabeth of Russia's wish to conquer Eastern Prussia. Frederick fully understood the odds that were beginning to stack against him, and he was not one to sit around with his thumb up his ass. He knew his enemies saw his growing power as highly threatening, but Why he was not? not one to give up Prussia's new prestige with ease. To avoid being surrounded on all sides, he would invade the electorate of Saxony on the 29th of August. Growing power as highly threatening, but he was not one to give up Prussia's new prestige. New prestige. I want to learn about, with about ease. that. I've seen like some history of matters videos about Prussia. I, I need to like watch them again or watch another one with more info. To avoid being surrounded on all sides. But I feel like I've been watching so much early 1800s, early 19th century. I I'd like to go into mid late 18th, but I think before that the 1700s, so 18th century. Who would invade the electorate of Saxony on the 29th of August 1756, igniting the powder keg the world had become in the process? Welcome to the Seven Years' War. The war began in 1756, or 1754, or 1740. We'll just go with 1756. Mm. The war would be fought between the two alliances, or war parties, of the Convention of Westminster and the Treaty of Versailles. No, not that one. The former featuring the states of Great Britain and Prussia, and France, Austria, and Russia being one with the latter. Frederick's invasion into Saxony was a success, and he was able to capture the state, but he was not granted the momentum he desired to push into the Austrian territory of Bohemia. Meanwhile, in the Americas, Britain's luck had begun Begun to turn around as the British government poured I more, really and like more resources channel. into the theater. Britain's luck had begun to turn around as the British government poured more and more resources into the theater. That would mean, though, that Frederick could not expect much assistance from the British on the continent. Britain had allied with Prussia as they saw him as the best fit to defend George's title and Hannah resources into the theater. Britain's luck had begun to turn around as the British government poured more and more resources into the theater. That would mean, though, that Frederick could not expect much assistance. Really? So the American. Um, what's it called? The American Front? The American side of the war? Was that important to uh, Britain that they uh, put so much resources not to be able to help in Europe? As much. Since from the British on the continent, Britain had allied with Prussia as they saw him as the best fit to defend George's title in Hanover, where he had inherited the title of electorate due to hereditary monarch Faf. In return, Frederick could hope that the British would be able to economically cripple France by eliminating their colonies, which Britain would have gladly done anyway. As Frederick's enemies moved in, they threatened to tie a noose around Frederick's custard splat of a country. In 1757, France moved its forces to Prussia's west, attempting to seize Hanover. To accompany this, the Austrians began to move in as well, heading straight for Saxony. Frederick did not falter though, and he stood his ground and convincingly defeated the two armies in Saxony. Despite this heroic victory, the mood for the Prussians would dampen as Austria was able to reunite with its old territory of Silesia in late 1757. In addition, Sweden saw weakness in Prussia and sought to reclaim some of their own estranged territories in the Pomeranian War, adding yet another threat to the north. Hope for the learning. Prussians would only continue to degrade as Russia seized Prussia's eastern territories and an offensive into Austria was met with failure. Britain's war on the colonies was for them, thankfully, on a lighter note. On July 1758, they had taken a great victory at the Battle of Louisbourg, signalling the beginning of the end for the French. As stated earlier though, to claim such a victory, they had been forced to focus almost entirely on the Americas, leaving Prussia in what seemed a death's grip. 1759 seemed as so if it important. would be the end of Prussia. A combined Russian and Austrian what, offensive... 1759 seemed as if it would be the end of Prussia. A combined Russian and Austrian offensive threatened to wipe Berlin off the map after they took victory at the Battle of Kunersdorf. Frederick France. would be saved in what he entitled the Miracle of the House of Brandenburg. The Russian and Austrians had failed to take advantage of the opportunity to defeat Prussia. For what reason, you may ask? And Austrians had failed like, to take right, advantage wait, of the Who's opportunity going? to defeat Prussia. For what reason, you may ask? I don't know. France, mm. despite its support from a multitude of native groups, was unable to rival Britain's infantry and naval presence on the continent, as Louis' indecisive attitude left his country split between the war in Europe and the war in the colonies, losing both because of it. France and Britain alongside their scuffle in the col and on the continent, as Louis' indecisive attitude left his country split between the war in Europe and the war in the colonies, losing both because of it. France and Britain alongside their scuffle in the colonies would fight a long war at sea, attempting to see who truly had naval supremacy. Sure, we all know who that is today, but Britannia rules the wave wasn't as solidified a concept at the time. The fleets that each nation held were so large they were capable of fighting battles all over the globe on five continents. So they're, they're the dominant navy in the Napoleonic Wars. They are not as dominant now. So what happens in between now and the in 1800?
and should be able to find French and British ships floating battles. So 1750 to, to 1800 must be a very big uh, half century for uh, British shipping. All over the globe. On Can you guys find me a damn video? Sorry. For for just I I want to know how ships are built. Like I I. Not just how ships are built, but, like, I know one day they, they weren't just like, all right, make this ship right here with this many sails here and all the, all the, use this type of wood for the hull here. And, like, it had to take so much evolution to have, well, it'd be good to have a sail here. Let's put a second sail over here, a small triangular, like, jib or whatever, flying jib. I'm not a sailor, but I I really want to know. Continents should be able to find French and Br capable of fighting battles all over the globe. On five continents should be able to find French and British ships floating, or rather sinking, off the coast. The warship became the centerpiece of any navy. It held the firepower of an army and would cost roughly the same as one. The war at sea would become a vicious cycle where every battle mattered. The one with more sh the ship became the centerpiece of any navy. It held the firepower of an army and would cost roughly the same as one. The war at sea would become a vicious cycle where every battle mattered. The one with more ships was able to better defend its trade routes with which to obtain greater wealth Lucky. to build more ships. On land, the British would continue their push after their success at Louisbourg, moving into Canada and capturing Quebec and then later Montreal, stripping France of its foothold and any chance of a comeback. Back in Europe, France America. decided it wished to well, take up its own- Britain, but Ameri that is America at the time offensive and clean up Austria and Russia's That didn't make any sense. Sake. Yet again being split between the colonies, the seas and the continent they were incapable of come back. Back in Europe, France decided it wished to take up its own offensive and clean up Austria and Russia's stupid mistake. Yet again being split between the colonies, the seas and the continent they were incapable of seeing any success. Regardless of Frederick's earlier miracle, he still stood on the brink of defeat, not able to launch any offensive into enemy territory without certain defeat. All Frederick could do now is sit and wait. Between 1760 and 1762, the conflict in Europe began to slow, so I can afford to touch on some other theatres, such as the conflict in India. European wars there were not a new thing. Wars had been fought between rival companies on Indian soil before, and the Seven Years' War would only serve to renew these squabbles. Louis had wished to finally see his struggle against the East India Company come to a close and the originally named French East India Company become THE company on the- It's like an American British flag. We should form... Alright, so bre Brexit happened, right? So... England, how do you think of this? Canada, New Zealand, Australia. Let's all come together, all right? Put aside our differences and become the English Union, and that can be our flag right there. And we will dominate the seas once again subcontinent. The fighting was mainly oriented around the south of India, and the British, with thanks to their robust navy and military discipline, were able to seize many French settlements and forts in the area, despite the French having the support of the Mughal Empire. With credit to what is becoming a trend here, the French being spread too thin, the British were able to see victory when they took their rival company's capital of Wandiwash in 1761, effectively ending the war in India. The war at sea also told the quite familiar story at this point. Britain, being an island nation, had focused heavily heavily on being good at one thing, in this context navy, the French had not. Louis would find himself on the losing side of the cycle I described earlier, and as a consequence their supply lines were cut thin, and as they continued to lose the war at sea, they would only increase their chances of losing the war on the continent. To return to the aforementioned continent, Frederick's luck had not seemed to have dwindled at all. He was once again saved when in a sudden twist of fate his rival Elizabeth died to the largest killer of all history health complications. She was succeeded by her intensely German nephew, Peter III, in 1762, who just so happened to be Frederick's number one fan and would sign the Treaty of St. Petersburg that would see Russia withdraw from the war, and shortly later, nephew, Peter III, in 1762, who just so happened to be Frederick's number one fan. I love how it's connecting stuff to what I learned before in the History of Russia videos on Epic History TV. This is why I love history. This is why I love this channel. This is why I love you guys. And, and would sign the Treaty of St. Petersburg that would see Russia withdraw from the war, and shortly later Sweden as well in the shape of the Treaty of Hamburg. 
With Russia's exit from the war, all was not yet lost with the Treaty of Versailles, as earlier in 1759 the Spanish monarch Ferdinand VI had died and was succeeded by his half-brother Charles III, whose ambitious plans for Spain would see him enter Bourbon Spain into the war in 1762, allied with, of course, Bourbon France. Spain itself targeted Portugal, who had been predominantly neutral. So Spain and Portugal especially, but Spain has really got to be on... I could be wrong here. The, the the downturn. Like I when I think of like the Spanish Empire, I, I think I, I think of like um the seventeenth century. Maybe early point. 18th. Portugal was still recovering from the devastating Lisbon earthquake of 1755, and Joseph I of Portugal had stressed the need to rebuild rather than to militarize. Spain's invasion of Portugal would be dubbed the Fantastic. You rather rebuild stuff for your Civilians then get a better military. Eh, it's not that cut and dry. I was trying to make a joke, but if you don't build a military, that's also bad for citizens. Fantastic war, as despite Failed. Spain and France's overwhelming advantage in numbers, most troops would succumb to hunger, disease, and low morale. Despite Spain joining the war, even they were not able to research the struggle in North America. Britain had become far too dominant in the colonies. Down south in the New World, though, a new conflict would emerge. Portugal's colony of Brazil was to be attacked on all sides by the Spanish colonies that surrounded it. I want to learn about this. The Portuguese would have to fight a game of strategy, avoiding entering battles they could not win. They would lose some territory, but nowhere near as much as the Spanish had been counting on. France had its own idea to turn the war around. At the proposal of the French foreign minister, Chauzuel, a plan was set in action to attack Britain directly. The plan was ambitious, costly, and frankly stupid, as France's expensive fleet was sunk by the British Navy before they were even halfway to Britain. France Why Britain would directly. they do that? The plan was ambitious, costly, and frankly stupid, as France's expensive fleet... I love the way that British people say stupid. Stupid. Very stupid. ...was sunk by the British Navy before they were even halfway to Britain. France had lost the naval arms race. With Russia out of the war, Spain... What are you doing, France? ...and frankly Hold on. stupid, as France's expensive fleet was sunk by the British Navy before they were even halfway to Britain. Love that France had lost the naval arms race. With Russia out of the war, Spain preoccupied with Portugal and France in shambles, Frederick's only enemy left was the Austrians, who he would defeat in multiple battles in the closing months of 1762. Frederick's war ended in 1763 with the Treaty of Hubertusburg. The pre-war conditions were to be restored, save the million dead people and the now crippled economies. The Seven Years' War would take four treaties to end, two of which being the earlier mentioned Treaty of St. Petersburg and Hamburg. In 1763, with a combination of the Treaty of Paris and the Treaty of Hubertusburg, that would be signed on the 10th of February and 15th of February 1763, respectfully, the war ended. In Europe, the pre-war scenario was to be restored and have little to no border changes commence. As a consequence of this victory, Frederick had been able to cement his country's position as an official great power of Europe. Go, and as a consequence, this time in the more negative connotation of the word, France France began a rapid decline from the Seven Years' War onward, which would famously conclude in the French Revolution. They helped us out. Revolution. That would subsequently Thank lead to Napoleon's reign, which would change the face of Europe forever. If you ponder for a moment, you might ask, now that Britain's rival was out of the picture, what is left for Britain? Well, a little old thing called building the largest empire to ever exist. After their resounding success in the Seven Years' War, it seemed as if no one could stop them. In favor of not being too Eurocentric here, I should also touch on the colonies. They're important to some people. 320 million people, to be a bit more exact. France was amazed one could stop them. In favor of not being too Eurocentric here, I should also touch on the colonies. They're important to some people. Yeah. 320 million people, to be a bit more exact. France was made to cede its possessions in Canada to Britain and partition Louisiana between Britain and Spain. France would Not also lose their long. territory in India to the British, leaving the British to soon dominate all of India and force the Indians under colonial rule. In the Americas, the natives no longer held any power to play the two rival empires off one another, leaving them to be almost entirely subject to the will of the colonies. The will of the colonies would also be shown when they preached no taxation without representation and had cost a lot of money and put Britain in a lot of debt to win the war. You're damn right, brother. Hell yeah, brother.
war in the Americas, and given the fact it had cost a lot of money You're and put Britain damn in a lot right. of debt to win the war in the Americas, and given the fact that the colonists saw the most reward, it seemed only right they foot the bill in the form of new taxes. I'm pretty sure we No. We all know how this little story ended. The struggle in South America You're between damn Spain right, and Portugal, brother. but also we know how this little story ended. The struggle in South America between Spain and Portugal, but also lead to a future war between the two sides in 1776, which I'm sure means something. But for the love of God, I'm sick of researching this stuff. All in all, the Seven Years' War is this epic behemoth of a war that, whilst it does get mentioned, is severely unexplored by us as a people today. Whilst it is easy to get lost in the millions of things that happened in the Seven Years' War, it really is a fascinating setting. It's an 18th century world war. Like, how cool is that? Oh, oh right, like and this the societal and historical impacts play a significant part in our history. They have elephants and red coats. It's so awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's the note I'm finishing the video awesome on. Awesome channel. Such a great channel. They're getting up. They're top three, no doubt. I'm sorry, they're, they're not better than, history, than Epic History TV, but n no channel is better than Epic History TV. I'm sorry. Um... Messina, how'd you like that? Um, trying to make an eyesight joke. Um, don't lose, uh, don't, mm, I, I, I don't know. How did that look? All right. <clears throat> See you guys next time. Subscribe. Discord. Go.